Hey, dog girl. Hey, dog boy. How's it going? Great. I'm so excited. I am too. We're getting to talk to two of my personal uh, heroes in the dog world. Yes. Uh, these two ladies were a literal lifeboat in a, the Titanic of what was 2020. Yes, they were. Susan Briggs and Robin Bennett from the Dog Gurus. Yes. Now, these are ladies that we have known for many years. Decades. Close to decades, I would say. Yeah. And uh, very respected in the dog world. And they have become friends of ours and and mentors to us. Absolutely yeah. uh, saved our business in 2020. So we could not be more excited to talk with them and find out more about what they do and how they help people that are either already in the pet care industry or people who want to get into the pet care industry and how so. they started and why they started yeah. and just we're going to dig in deep today yeah I'm ex I, I really am excited all right let's get to it let's do it welcome ladies These, thanks for having us yeah we're I really appreciate your time I know you guys um are very busy and that your time is literally very expensive <laughs> um, but like you like a lot of people don't realize that you were really a, a lifeboat and a you know like you were there when like the industry was crashing and the world was crashing around like you really like yeah, you, you guys COVID. saved mm -hmm. us like I mean you were really there when we needed information and comfort and guidance and um it was really like what you guys have built you know we had thought about wanting to be consultants and you were like yeah we know a lot of stuff but like what you guys have <laughs> built and amassed is really really impressive like i'm well, you know i'm really impressed with how much like the depth and breadth of what you guys have done yes yeah well so. thanks we appreciate that we definitely have a heart for the small business owner in the pet industry. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a, obviously we have a passion for dogs, but we also have a passion for people and especially those small business owners. So yeah. 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 Well, tell Our, us a little bit about how you guys got started individually and then what brought you together. Well, we do this all the time. So I'll start and then kick it over to Susan at, <laughs> okay. at an appropriate time. But uh, cause this is a question we get asked all the time. We, a lot of people always are like, where do you guys live? And we're like, yeah, I'm in one state and Susan's in the other. And we've never been in the same state. So that's always a big surprise to people. I think they always mm -hmm. think that we, you know, are working and, and living yeah. really close together, but that's not the case. So I used to be in Virginia. I'm in Colorado now, but I was a certified professional dog trainer, got certified almost 30 years ago now and still mm -hmm. am certified. And I was running my own training business for about four years doing in-home lessons and private lessons. And I just got tired of being on the road all the time. And so I wanted to get a facility. So I, you know, got my own facility to do training. Mm -hmm. And then I decided, and this was about, you know, 20, almost 20 years ago. Now I decided I would do this thing called daycare. Like it was a new thing what? at the time. I had no idea what I was doing. I, so I opened my training studio, but during the day I thought, well, I'll just do some daycare during the day and generate a little bit more revenue mm -hmm. for this training studio that I have. Well, I didn't realize I started daycare Monday, Wednesday, and Friday within a year, it grew to five days a week within another year. I had to move to a bigger location and daycare yeah. kind of took over. Um, I continued to do the training obviously, but daycare sort of took over. Um, yeah lot of that as well. And that's really how I got into the whole daycare industry to begin with. And then I started attending seminars. Um, back then, the American Boarding Kennel Association was the big uh, trade yep. association for us. And that's where I met Susan. And um, we just had a joint passion. And so I'll kind of kick it over to Susan and she can talk about like what happened from there and what she was doing prior to that. Sounds good. Yeah, I um, co-founded Urban Tales in Houston, Texas, like 1999-2000, and so we were one of the first daycares in Houston. I think we were the second in Houston and third in the greater metro area, um, mm -hmm. and kind of got some inspiration from Dog Boys, so, Aww. you know, what? you guys- That totally made my day the day you told me that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I was um, needing to travel- Oh, I was going on an African safari and was looking for where could I keep my dogs. And 
So oh, that's we were cool. a little far, but you guys were the only ones that cut the mustard as far as what I was looking for. Nice. So partnered with a couple of um, people I knew um, and we started Urban Tales. So we were doing, you know, a multi-service pet center in just south of downtown Houston. Mm -hmm. And um, like Robin said, I was a member of the association and going to association meetings and actually was sitting in a seminar Robin was giving. And I just can remember to this day sitting there and she asked the question, are the dogs that come into your daycare leaving behaviorally as well or better than when they arrived? And yeah. I thought, holy crap, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really important question. It is. It is so key. I just you know, really struck me that, oh my gosh, we could be doing unintentionally harm right. to some dogs that come to our businesses for play and enjoyment. So, right. you know, after that conference, I kind of came back and decided that, you know, we could do a lot better job in how we train our team to understand the dogs and take care of the dogs. So I started looking for resources on teaching canine body language and the mm -hmm. only resource I found was um, Roger Abrante's book, The Encyclopedia of Dog. And mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have yeah, seen no, that book. It's an oldie but a goodie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's not very friendly for the level of staff that we employ. And I told right. Robin at one point, I'm reading this book and my head hurts <laughs> trying <laughs> to understand it. But it's very science. I, I, it's very scientific based. Um, so I would scan in pictures and kind of created my own little book in spiral bound, you know, where you do your own spiral bound mm -hmm. um, books. And that's what I started using to train my staff and teach them canine body language. And so at one point, not long after that, Robin sent out an email, just kind of like, I'm looking for projects. So if anybody has an idea, you know, just run it past me and maybe we could, you know, work together. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is Robin Bennett asking for <laughs> input. And I can still remember sitting at my computer comprising the email and my business partners are there and I'm like, okay, I'm nervous, but I'm going to hit send. <laughs> and <Aww. laughs> and um, Robin came back and goes, sure, sounds like a great idea, which I proposed that the industry needed a book on teaching canine body language and safe play because she had written the book on the business side of getting a daycare started. And she had content on body language and all that but I felt like we needed a resource just for the staff so yeah that's what we did we wrote off leash dog play a complete guide to safety and fun over mm -hmm. the internet yeah that was before wow. Dropbox before <laughs> like all these <laughs> really good technology sharing apps are available so we basically yeah. would send each other you know chapters at a time and we wrote our first book that way Wow. And then from there, we that book, Off Leash Dog Play, turned into um, Knowing Dogs, which is our staff training program. And it mm -hmm. turned into basically us creating a whole lot of other resources. And we, we've been working together since that time, but then eventually formed a joint venture, initially formed a joint venture called the Dog Gurus, and then eventually turned that into the business that it is today. Wow. And it is quite a business that you have, that you have built. Yeah. I mean, you know, we... I knew both of you before you got together in your businesses, like we, we worked in, in the industry, yeah. you know, kind of all at the same time in different areas. And, and we've all been around a while. Yeah. Yeah. It was really <laughs> cool. Like I've just kind of nice. Were, and Susan and I were on a board together yeah. Yeah. for the industry and it wasn't until COVID hit and I just started seeing you guys on Facebook, like doing Facebook lives and, you know, stuff just started showing up on my Facebook feed. And I was like, you know, our business just went in the toilet in a matter of like one week. We went from like, we're about to celebrate yeah. our 25th anniversary to <laughs> we might go out of business. Like this is not yeah. funny. And, yeah. and all I, all I could do was just reach out to you guys and like plug into what you were doing. Pivot, and it was, pivot, pivot. it was so much <laughs> yeah. value. I couldn't unplug. Like I was yeah. just like, <laughs> I can't get enough of this. Like, this is so helpful. And you yeah. were bringing in industry experts and, you know, people to talk about, uh, yeah. you know, sanitation and and safety and how to talk to clients and, and just everything yeah, here's and, a new idea oh like, my gosh here's another revenue stream you know yeah and i think i do think when COVID hit because obviously we serve the pet industry and mm -hmm. we saw that 
you know, the fear and the panic and for our own business, it was the same thing too. But we, like I said, we just have a heart. And I think because Susan and I both have owned our own facility, all of our coaches that we have on our team all own their own facilities. I think we understand like what literally from the emotional aspect, not just from the, we get, we get what you're going through. Like Mm -hmm. we really understood what you're going through because we've been there before. And so um, we had coaches as well. And one of our coaches said, you guys should be helping. And we're like, yeah, we should be helping. So <laughs> you guys should be helping. <laughs> we started, we started saying, let's just get on Facebook and do it. And we've just started doing weekly Facebook um, lives. And that has continued mm-hmm. now because it became really fun for us to talk to people every week and be able to share something. And, and we were hearing from everybody and we knew from being, from being business owners in that industry, what you guys were going to need. So we just started reaching out to the people we know saying, Hey, can you come on here and talk about this? And Hey, can, so I'm glad to hear it was helpful. Oh my it gosh. Really it was, was so helpful. And before I, I mean, I was just going to say, we ended up joining your profit network before, but before I jump ahead to that, maybe you could just kind of explain to the people that are listening and watching just the, <laughs> the three main programs that you guys, um, do use to help other business, other pet care facilities. And then we'll get into like pet guru college and all of that. Yeah. Well, we're, our focus is to really kind of help pet business owners or want to be pet business owners launch if they're just wanting to get into the industry. So we have launch formula, um, which um, will walk them through five stages of getting a business open. And we kind of put that together with information that, collectively a lot of mistakes we made to try to (laughs) help other people avoid them because you know some of the mistakes just cost your business money but we really want people to avoid mistakes that can cause harm to pets and Mm -hmm. so um, we're really proud of that program because it not only covers the pet care side but also the business side because as we know things are more expensive and so you don't always have the time to figure out how to run this business. And so learning from people that have been there, you can shortcut and avoid costly mistakes. That's the real value. Like when I was going through all of this, my thought was it's, I, I really wish we would have had something like this when we were starting. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. We were just yeah. stumbling around in the dark. And I was like, you know, just all I, of I, us I that, thought, all of us that started when we all started, which was so many years ago, there really <laughs> wasn't anything. So anyone yeah. that we know from the ABKA t- days, mm-hmm. they always say that. And Susan and I have said that. I wish we had this when we started. Right. <laughs> because it, it, I mean, we were all sort of just figuring it out as we went. Mm-hmm. And I don't think people understand that are, you know, starting or ju- just have started or, you know, whatever, one year or five years into it, you know, they'll look at, you know, well, it's kind of a little bit pricey, but like the, the value or the, the time, I feel like we would be easy five years, probably 10 years ahead of where we are with what we're doing and, you know, debt and savings and right. Staff training and and all that. If we had started and helping dogs and saving dogs. And, you know, I just, it's, it's a, it's, it's the best deal. Like, if we had had the tools yeah. right. Right. early on. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's the advantage of coming after the pioneers, you know, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I don't feel like a pioneer. Like I don't you know. Are a pioneer. You are I, a pioneer. I, I just, I, you know, when I'm telling people that you, there was never, you know, people didn't know what daycare was. They were like, no, that's I mean, crazy. You guys yeah. Had a very unique concept that, was new to the industry. So, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. and it was very successful and and good for the dogs. So it's awesome. Thank you. I think if we had to do it all over again, we would have done it in a different way than we have done it. But, um, but yeah, it was, people told us we were totally insane. We were going to get sued and it was just never going to work. And I was like, we're kind of already doing it and it's working. (laughs) We're going to keep doing it. And I think the most, uh, you know, rewarding time was when one of Bart's old bosses, the one who inspired him to start the business, who basically every time he asked if he could help a dog, she was like, not your job. Not your job. Um, she ended up coming to listen to a lecture from us 
in, during an ABK regional. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And and dogs to play together. Seeing her in the audience was just so sweet. You know, it was just, yeah, it was that's really great. Nice. Yeah. The second oh. sweetest was uh, an employee who went off to start her own business and she came back later and was like, I had no idea. <laughs> that's no hard. No idea how hard this is. This is eating me alive. And I yeah. was like, yeah, it's different when you're the. Yeah, exactly. She when all she, the responsibility is on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she said that she walked into a room one time and was like, where is the adult here? You know, <laughs> who's in charge? And she was like, oh, shit, that's, that's me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's a lot of work. Yeah. So I, maybe we cut you off before Sorry. you were finished oh, talking about it. That's right. It, the next program we have for business owners who are open um, and probably, well, this program is for anybody that's open and just feeling like they're struggling with either paying themselves a owner's wage, which we mm -hmm. really feel like for the risk and as you say, the responsibility that pet business owners take to provide care, we should be making six figure salaries. And when we would look at industry surveys of what owners were paying themselves, it was far below that. And so we kind of set that as a benchmark goal that we felt every pet business owner should aspire to make and bring home a six figure salary for taking the risk to start this business and carrying that responsibility of caring for other people's pets. And so one thing that I found in my own business when I felt like things were just not going like I wanted. It wasn't, my business was no longer reflecting what I felt the vision was for it and realized that was my fault because I hadn't put it, the systems in place, the staff training, all the things of even just the financial tools that I knew should be there. You know, you just get caught up in the daily fires yeah. and wow. it's hard to go back and those systems and processors are so important for providing consistent care, keeping staff on the same page and everybody pulling together in the same direction. Mm -hmm. And so that's what growth intensive helps a pet business owner do is kind of step back, revisit that mission and purpose of your business, and then put the systems in place so that you're priced right, making money, working from a budget, putting a team together, that supports what you do and are well-trained. And then also the marketing and customer service, everything that it takes to really have a business that can operate without you. Because the other thing we found were pet business owners were never taking time off yeah. and it's high burnout and you've yeah. got to be able to get away from your business and recharge. So kind of what Robin and I wanted to do was help the pet business owners make that six figure salary and go on a, like a real vacation. Right. Have a life back from their business. Yeah, have have a life. Life. Exactly. Have that freedom. So that's what growth intensive is designed to help you do. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really one of our biggest passions for those pet care business owners is we want the best of the best to be continuing and the best of the yeah. best often are also the ones that put the dogs first to the detriment of their own life. Yeah. Themselves. And the, the great thing is they're taking amazing care of the dogs, but the bad thing is they're also the ones that are going to burn out or go out of business because they're not taking care of themselves or paying themselves enough to make it a sustainable business. And that's really one of the things that we really want to change and help people to say, you, this is not impossible. You actually can run a really good business and make money and have a staff that can you know, fill in when you're not there and you want to take a vacation. So that's really, and we all know that those people are, they're not working 40 hours. Like they're no. well over 40 hours. Oh, right. Exactly. Doing is like, if you have these things, you don't have to work 80 hours a week and you have people that can be there. Like you said, when you're not there. So, mm -hmm, so yeah. that's again, super valuable. Yep. So our, the two big buckets we do is that business consulting, like Susan was talking about. And then we also help with staff training. So we have our flagship product, which was knowing dogs, which mm -hmm. trains employees on canine body language. And then now we also have pet guru college as well, which is an entire training program for the facility, because we know that getting your systems in place and having the business information that you need to actually run a business is one challenge for pet care business owners, but we also know staff training is the other one. So we try to hit both of those to help out. Yeah. I remember we bought knowing dogs when you 
when it came out. Yeah. Not right away. It was after it had been out for quite a while. And until um, we just signed on with Pet Guru College, like we had been hanging on to that little copy of Knowing Dogs, you know, <laughs> just because that was the best thing that we had that we could, yeah. you know, short of sending them to like Clicker Expo or something. Right. You know, that was the tool that we had that had the most, you know, comprehensive training in it. Um, but Pet Guru College just takes it to, you know, a 10x level. And that's, yeah. I mean, that's been just super valuable to our team. And um, yeah. Uh, and the I've, dogs. Yeah, the I've dogs just are been benefiting. thrilled that we have access to that. So yeah. we're grateful for that too. Good job, y'all. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> you it was a lot of work. So it looks yeah. like it. How long yeah. did it take you to write it? It was interesting. Um, two years ago, we did a kind of team um, retreat here in Houston and we um, brainstormed what do the teams that work for us need to know mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so we did we started with that list and then from that list it's like okay how do you break that down into what is the actual training modules related to that so it was two years in development um, a good nine months of once we actually had outlined the content to actually mm -hmm. then write the scripts and create it and record the videos and that was like the biggest project I've ever coordinated in my life. There were so many moving pieces. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was just amazing. Um, but it was a great team effort as far as we had some great input um, from some team members. Um, we're really proud of kind of the animated um, soft skill videos that are there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we know adult learners now have short attention span. So, That's you know, true. we thought knowing dogs was... Um, we did a good job with 20 minutes or less per session. Well, you know, Pet Guru College, we tried to keep everything under 10 minutes. Yeah. Really eight was our goal. Um, yeah. And there's a variety of learning styles. There's PDFs, three different types of videos. And so, mm -hmm. yeah. And then I think the key thing we did was we arranged it by role. Just so that you could just basically say, if you got a daycare yeah. counselor that's coming in, sit them down. We decided what order it needed to go in. Yeah. We put the knowing dogs in when we felt it made sense. And so you really have your orientation and for your um, probationary period. Yeah. You uh -huh. exactly. So that was kind of fun being able to set up the content by role yeah. to make it easy. Yeah. Now you just need to shorten it to a TikTok version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with just like a the quick 10 Don't second video. Yeah. You do like, you know, synchronized dancing. And <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, we're, we're idea people. This yeah. is how we work. We I like it. I like it. <laughs> well, we signed on with your profit network and that was just so valuable. I mean, having our own coach that we could meet with and like yeah. mastermind Zoom meetings and all that. That's just been awesome. Yeah. I have to tell you that you know, at first I was like, dog is this and dog is that. And my staff is like, what, who's that? You know, <laughs> and I would just like talk, I'm still saying your name at least once a day. Yeah. And uh, the other day I had just like the, I just, my heart got so warm. I walked into my office and there was my office manager and our facility manager. And watching. they were watching a, a video on the LMS, the learning yeah. management system about uh, enrichment, uh, equipment, safe enrichment equipment. Yeah. And all the, Robin was talking all about all the different kinds of, you know, She's things like, that dogs can play on and how to keep them safe. <laughs> and I just walked in, I was like, oh, <laughs> together. And on I didn't own. even make them do it. <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's always that nice great. to hear. It was great. I laugh sometimes when I go someplace pre COVID when we could actually go places and I will, you know, go to a seminar or something and I'll be talking to someone and someone will walk by and go, oh, I recognize your voice. You're <laughs> from listening to knowing dogs. So yeah, Susan yeah. and I get that a lot when, and that's always fun, but mm -hmm. yeah. I want to know if Ranger's famous yet. <laughs> Ranger definitely has his fans. So <laughs> yeah, I think he gets more likes. Anything I post about him gets way more likes than anything I post about me or my family or. Oh my gosh. Do you guys like so. any you know, business partners or partner partners. Um, do you guys feel like you uh, like are strong in one place where the other person's weak or do you compliment each other? Oh, I definitely think we compliment each other. We both have our own strengths and weaknesses. And I think, I definitely think that we 
are, are a great team because of that. So mm-hmm. there's certain things, technology stuff I'm better at. And, yeah. and, and the good thing is most of the stuff we're better at, we're also enjoy more too. Mm-hmm. So I that's think important. that's a really, it's a really good um, collaboration because mm-hmm. there's pretty much things fall out pretty equally in terms of what needs to get done and then who needs to do it. When I did you say. guys like first, like physically meet? Like, cause you've been mm-hmm. like, you know, I guess it was at the conferences. It was, yeah. I had, Robin. what happened with me was that. I had, when I had opened my daycare, I started getting calls. Cause as you guys know, that was back when nobody had daycare and nobody knew what daycare was. And I started getting, I was on the East coast. I started getting calls from people on the East coast. How do you do this? And how do you do that? And how did you open? And I didn't have time to deal with any of them because I was running my own business, but I have, I have always been a person that writes down like what I'm doing. And so I had put together this like 25 page spiral bound booklet for myself. And I just started telling people, look, I don't have time to talk to you. I don't have time to talk to you. I'm running a business, but here, take this book. It tells you how to do everything. Aww. And that the interesting thing about that is I always joke that I was trying to get away from talking to people. Turns out if you write a book, people want to talk to you more, not less. Yeah. So <laughs> that strategy kind of backfired in the long run, but that, but that booklet became um, all about dog daycare, which was my first published book. Mm-hmm. And when, once I published that, I started getting people asking me to come and speak. And that's how I ended up speaking at the American Boarding Kennel Association. And that was where I met Susan. Did she and, come up afterwards or? Like- I, yeah, she came up afterwards. And there was just, a, there was at that point, I mean, I can remember the ABK conference where we, there was a dinner and S- Susan and I were sitting at a table with a couple of other people who did daycare. And this is the interesting thing is I can remember this, the speaker at that dinner saying, how many of you in here who do daycare? And there was like three or 400 people in the room. And it was like the table where I was, <laughs> me and Susan, and like two other people <laughs> raised their hands and everybody else was like sinners, you know, yeah, like back then crazy. it was not acceptable to do daycare. It was yeah. not acceptable to put non-family dogs together yeah. back then. And yeah. so they, the people were super nice to me but there was always a little bit of you're doing what kind of like what you said, people Mm -hmm. were saying to you, you get dogs killed. And yeah. Um, So, yeah. So we, that was when we first met is just through those. And then every year I would go to conferences and I would just naturally gravitate to Susan and Charlotte. I know her. I know her now. So we're saying, well, you talked about when, um, you know, Bart's boss heard you speak. Robin and I, we would, we did get asked, and this is what was great about ABK. Even if they didn't hundred percent agree with you, they would yeah. a- ask you to teach because they recognized it was becoming popular yeah. and that it should be done with standards. And that was what Robin and I always said is that you can do it safely, but you have to do certain things. Yeah. Right. My boss was asking me, gotcha questions. <laughs> right. Like she was like well, putting me on the spot in front of a group of people. And right. I was just like, here's <laughs> yeah, your answer. Exactly. So Robin and I were doing this talk and this was probably like four or five years after you had started speaking there. And there were some, you know, founders of APK that were totally against um, daycare. And when we looked up and saw them in the back of the room attending our session, yeah. we're like, oh, okay, we're getting there. <laughs> yeah. And when some of them actually started daycare, we were like, yes. Like, yeah, yeah. Even better. Even so, better. Yeah. yeah. I have a question for you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They were always very nice though. I will, I they do were, have to admit, they were all very nice. They were like, Oh, you're going to get dogs killed, but you know, good luck to you. <laughs> yeah. Good luck to you little woman, yeah, you know, good but luck with that. they, and I have really good friends still from ABK days. And so it's, it's fun, but it's definitely was a journey. And it was, yeah. it was, I, I guess it's one of those things where they say, sometimes ignorance is bliss. Like I went into it it not thinking there was any problem with it. I actually now I'm more worried about it than ever because I do see what happens when you do it poorly. Mm -hmm. So, but at that time I was like, I'm, you know, I know enough. What could go wrong? Yeah. Well, and most pet care facility owners were not dog trainers. I mean, that's just really unheard of. So you did have a a leg up, so to speak, when you got it. Well, now- Although I will say that that I was a little probably a little cocky going into it because I really did think, oh, I'm a dog trainer. I know all about dog behavior. I can remember the first day I had four dogs off leash in a room. I was like, what am I doing? Like, yeah. this is crazy because it's totally different. Like all the dogs I knew canine body language when dogs were on a leash and it was 
you had plenty of time to figure out what the canine body language was saying. And there was no risk because the dogs are all on leash. That's you totally crazy. When they I, take the leash off. I had dogs off leash on 15 acres with no fence. <laughs> there was a like, fence. There, it there was, was like a five wire barbed wire fence. Oh yeah. It was just what the land came with originally. But you know, I just, I, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, <laughs> I wasn't just like, let's see what happens. But, you know, I realized if I just kept moving and didn't, you know, like talk to the baby, talk with the dogs and just kept moving, they kept going, well, this is the guy I know and has been feeding me. And, you know, and, and obviously, I mean, I was, had been training for a little while and I could read body language and, mm-hmm. You know, I didn't. You were a trainer too by that yeah. time. Mm-hmm. But I, I think about that now and I'm like, that's insane. Yeah. Like, I think dogs. all of us probably think back on the things that were like, why did we do that? Yeah. And that, I mean, AB, the one good thing about ABK is they did, like Susan said, they did, did see the value of doing things safely. And Susan was actually asked to chair a committee back then to help write the standards for daycare, which Mm -hmm. was amazing. And and so even though you had an organization that wasn't a hundred percent on board that this was the right thing to do, they were like, if people are gonna do it, we need to do it right. And so those standards were really, and I ended up on that committee as well. And so Susan and I worked together this was prior to the dog gurus being formed, but Susan and I worked together on that. Mm-hmm. And then sadly, when ABK went away, all those standards went away as well. But right. that was what made Susan and I say, look, we need to create our own standards then because there's yeah. nobody yeah. saying well, what I, it is. And by that time, we had been doing it long enough and right. we had seen enough facilities that we knew, like there's black and white things that will work and that won't. Right. Yeah. So that was really became our putting together those daycare industry standards as well. Yeah. The well, day- and- Go ahead. The, the dangerous thing that I've seen is uh, investors or people that are like, this is a good business to make some money in. Yeah. And like, that's their first thought is, you know, let's make some money. And so if you know, they don't have any concern for what's actually happening to the dogs or how it's yeah. getting done and our, like, our, without those standards, you know, it would right. just- Yeah. Our son worked uh, for a while. He was living in the Dallas area and he worked for a, I think it was a local chain. And yeah. uh, the facility there that he was working in, he said they had a capacity for 450 dogs. Which I can't they imagine. had like three My or gosh. four play areas. And the, um, the kennel staff's only job was to stay in the play area. And, you know, like with squirt bottles or whatever, you know, just completely wrong. All the things they were doing was just off. Uh, and they, they, he said that the, the mission statement of the company was all about profit. None, none of it had anything to do with care. And he, at first he's like, mom, I can fix this. Like, he's like, I can, I can save these people <laughs> and these dogs. And then like two weeks in, he's like, I have to get out of here. This is terrible. He's like, like, I can't I, do it. Like, yeah. He's like, know. I can't fix this. It's, you know. He's it's like, way this, too messed this up. This dog doesn't want to go into this play group. And they're like, just carry him in there and drop him. Oh and that, God. so and that's for me and Susan. That's why one of our biggest principles is understanding canine body language, because that's the yeah. filter through which you should be everything. viewing everything. I yeah. mean, not even just in daycare. I'm talking just everyday life with your dog. Like if you understand when your dog's happy, when they're fearful, when they're upset, that frames everything you should be doing with the dogs. And that's why we're big proponents. If the dog doesn't like it, take them out of daycare, do something else with them. Right. You know, but it's up to the dog. It doesn't matter how good your processes are. There are some dogs that are not going to be happy in a group full of other dogs. No. And our, I feel like our goal should be recognizing that and then finding a suitable activity, not forcing them to just deal with it. It's like right. taking me to a party. Hey, take him to another party. Exactly. <laughs> more people that he doesn't know and talk to them about nothing. I used to be like, it'll be fun. Come on. He's like, oh my God, I'll be in the corner. And yeah. I, can we leave like in 10 minutes? Yeah. I was like, yeah, Bart and I would be like, hanging out wallflowers together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what Susan always, Susan and I always use the example of like small cocktail parties versus big parties. And mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, at trade shows, it's funny because when we speak or we exhibit at a trade show, people really think we're extroverts and we're both really introverted. Yeah. So we love being around people, but we both need time to recoup or regroup mm-hmm. and, you know, have our quiet time. So oftentimes people are like, come to this big party. And we're like, we'll be in our room with six other people, you know, so yeah. <laughs> we'll see you at that's breakfast. Just, that's just how we are. And dogs yeah. are the same way. I mean, some dogs are going to love a big group and some dogs aren't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Well, and thankfully now there's the, I, the IBPSA, which is International yeah. Boarding, Boarding and Services Association. Right. But also I know Susan and maybe you too, Robin, I'm not sure that you're really involved in PAC, which is right. oh, yeah. Professional Animal Care Certification Council. Very good. You awesome. got all these yeah. acronyms yeah. going there, Courtney. <laughs> yes. Um, actually, I, I founded that with Charlotte Biggs and it's been I, almost five years ago, I know, because we we were inspired by um, the count, certification council for professional dog trainers. We mm -hmm. really wanted people to start seeing pet care as a profession. Yep. And if you're going to have a profession, then you need certification and certification um, is the proof that you have the knowledge to provide professional care. Mm -hmm. And so we are super excited that that does now exist for pet care services, for dog daycare, lodging, pet sitting, dog walking. Yeah, that's great. And we have three levels of certification, provider, manager, and operator. Mm -hmm. And um, very proud of that organization. Charlotte and I both are off the board. They're our little nest, they're flying on their own and <laughs> um, doing a great job and really excited how many people took the time during COVID to get certified. Yeah. I'm so putting it on my list for 2021 for yes. sure. Yeah. yeah. And the, the great thing it. about that PAC certification is it's an independent body certifying that you have the knowledge. So it's yeah. not, obviously the dog gurus, we provide education, but when we kept getting people saying, can you certify us? And I mean, it's, we could do that. You can say you went through knowing dogs, but that's like going to any school and you get a diploma from the school. Right, Whereas right. pack sort of, and that's valuable. I'm not saying it's not, obviously everyone should have knowing dogs, but, <laughs> but pack certification is kind of like um, sitting for the bar exam. Like you get yeah. the training to be a lawyer and then you have to go sit for an exam and someone else independently decides, do you have the knowledge to do it? That's what the PAC exam is. PAC exam does no education at all. Mm -hmm. They just have the body of knowledge and they say, this is what you need. Similar to the certification council for professional dog trainers, yep. right. they provide the body of knowledge and then you take the exam to, to show that you understand and have the skill and education behind yep. you to actually be certified. So mm -hmm. I love that part of it too, that it's really not dependent on you taking a certain course or a certain, you know, class or whatever. You do obviously need that, that education, mm -hmm. but you can get it wherever you want. Yeah. yeah. And Robin did help Pat get going as far as connections to CCPDT and sharing, you know, how that went, because as an industry, what we found our biggest challenge was when you create a certification exam, you need documentation of where that knowledge comes from. Mm -hmm. and right. In professional pet care, there wasn't a lot mm -hmm. documented and written down. I mean, just the um, that in an enclosure, a dog needs to be able to stand up, turn around and lay down. The thing we all know, yeah. finding, right. finding that cited source where it was written was a challenge. I bet. Well, and so, you know, that. that was, yeah, we didn't have the textbooks that a lot of industries have. And so kudos to a lot of volunteers who put a lot of time and energy into the, yeah, who said that? defining the body of knowledge, writing exam questions. I mean, it, it there was a big commitment from a lot of, um, we pulled in a lot of favors and then we couldn't <laughs> yeah. do it again. <laughs> Well, the most important thing to me is that all of the things that you all have done over your decades long experience, it's all been focused on making lives better for dogs. Like it wasn't yeah. about getting rich. It wasn't about everyone knowing every accounting detail. It was like, it wasn't about, you know, having all the best ideas. Uh, it was really about all of the things that you produced the end result is dogs have better lives. Well, and, and that the, is the part that I think is so yeah, that, admirable to the, us. The people that care for them too. Like, I mean, that right. was your, your goal was like, we want to help those people so you can help the dogs. I forgot who said it, but they said you could have, to paraphrase, you can have everything you want if you help everyone else get what they want mm -hmm. and need. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and for us, it really does come down to the dogs. I mean, that's the that's the basis for everything we do is we want dogs to be happy and healthy. And obviously the better your dog's life is, it, I mean, look how amazing dogs are to us. And oh especially gosh. during COVID, like 
they've taken the brunt of all of our anxiety and helped us. And I mean, it's proven fact dogs make your life better. And so for those people that, you know, love their dog and want, want the best for their dog, that's one of our biggest passions is ultimately if we can get dogs happier, everybody, it's going to permeate. Everybody wins. Have you ever seen a two-year-old see a dog? They're just like, (laughs) there's a commercial on TV right now where there's a little girl and she's in a hospital, obviously, and she doesn't feel good. You can tell. And the nurse comes in and she's like, we're going to try something new today. Oh, I've seen that. They bring in this dog and she's just like, look, I got goosebumps. Just talking about it. I I love that commercial. Dogs. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Sorry. I think it might be time for your speed round. Oh, speed round. Okay. You guys ready? Really hard question. We're ready. Um, Okay. (laughs) What, and these are all based on like, they were questions that I asked myself. Um, A lot of people know that like my first memory, uh, of play and joy was with a dog and making me teary. Uh, so what was y'all's first memory of uh, a dog? Mine was my, ironically, my family did not let me have a dog growing up, but all my life, I was the kid that was like every Christmas, every birthday, Easter, whatever the holiday was, I wanted a dog. Like that was what I would ask for. <laughs> Never had a dog, but I can remember all the dogs in the neighborhood were always over in my house, <laughs> in my yard. And I always used to play with them. I used to go to school and um, a couple dogs would follow me on my bike and they'd yeah. sit outside the school. They're no, they weren't my dogs. They're just like neighborhood right. dogs. Yeah. And um, like yeah, so I just have always been drawn to dogs, but my, and, I, and in hindsight, my mom was a, you know, mother of four and my dad was overseas at times because he was in the military. So I totally understand why we didn't have a dog. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just grew up with the love of dogs and just always playing with the dogs in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. I, awesome. I once yeah. got in trouble in fourth grade for like basically saving little chunks of turkey from my lunch <laughs> and there was a, a fence that like backed up to the school and I was feeding the dog like through the fence uh-huh. and I guess the owner called the school and said hey there's a kid bothering my dog <laughs> and I was like I wasn't bothering him oh, anyway that's funny. Susan that's when's, when do you remember dogs um, I remember my grandparents' dogs. My grandparents lived on a farm and they had a small dog in the house and then they had, you know, dogs that worked the farm. And I re- remember um, they had a German shepherd who lost a leg, but he was so resilient and could do anything and keep up. And I was just so impressed and amazed by just what they could do, you know, they were very different breeds and um, yeah. yeah. And then I just always, animals in general, I was just drawn to being outside Mm -hmm. and interacting with any animal. We had more cats than dogs um, growing up, but you know, when you get your first house, you get your first dog. That was totally me. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, us too. (laughs) Um, How many, speaking of getting your first house and dog, how many dogs have you guys had lifetime in like when you were kids up through like a, like now? Let's see. One, two, 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 two. I think like seven. Um, I had one. I, my very first dog was a dog that was given to me by my classmates in high school. Mm-hmm. And I had that dog for about a week before I had to give it. Re- my, my brought this dog home. Look my friends gave me this dog. My parents were not happy. Um, <laughs> they and, then I had, and then I had a couple of German shepherds and then ended up with a lab. Then when I got married, my husband had a dog. So that dog was incorporated into our family as well. Mm. And then I've had labs since then. So yeah, probably about are. seven. Yeah. I had six. Um, we had a beagle when I was growing up. That was, we did finally get a dog. It was a beagle. Um, but then once I had my own home, started out with a smooth collie, um, and the, yeah, she was precious and then golden retrievers and then went small with JJ, um, my little Chihuahua Shih Tzu poodle mix who oh, JJ. has taught me so much. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They teach. They are adorable. It's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. So we all know that having dogs. Uh, sometimes we, and we can laugh about it now mm-hmm. uh, but what's like your biggest like oh my gosh I can't believe my dog just did that or oh no moment or like your biggest vet bill like you know just something that was just like I oh snap can't believe that happened mm-hmm. um well what 
I had two and both of them were dogs eating something. One was uh, my, one of my labs ate an entire Easter basket one oh, year. That's I so mean, the, the chocolate in it. Yeah. And so he was fine. He just threw up quite a bit. Mm. Um, he was also, that was also the same lab that one time I came home and he had opened, somehow opened the food bin and he was like a pork pot belly pig. He was like, and he was still standing there eating out of it. <laughs> I was like, oh my day. gosh. Nice. And he was fine. He was fine, but he just threw up quite a bit and had some diarrhea. But I don't know if he'd have stopped until he got to the bottom of the yeah. wall. <laughs> it was awful. Had a dog so, like that. How did he die? He, <laughs> he ate it. himself. <laughs> he ate it. Yeah, he was fine, but that that was the same dog, actually. But yeah. that's probably I'm I mean, I'm considered myself lucky because I haven't had too many like crazy weird things happen. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. those two are probably it's funny when you guys are talking about these things, I'm like flashing through like All the, the thing, different things, the other that, things that we ours. have. And then I've been like, oh yeah, that wouldn't happen too. <laughs> Well, I do. The funny story I do remember is I had two dogs at the time, a German shepherd and a lab. And I came home and I had had gotten some vitamins with iron for myself. And mm -hmm. I had gotten home with them in the bag. And as soon as I walked in the door, my friend called me and she goes, Hey, you want to go get ice cream? So I'm like, Oh, of course I want to go get ice cream. So I threw the, I just threw the bag on the couch. I didn't think anything of it. And I, and I went to get ice cream. So I came back and the, the <laughs> bottle had been you know, chewed up and there were pills on the floor and I could, I counted them really quick. And I was like, okay, like 20 pills are not there. Mm. So I grabbed my one dog, <laughs> which is my lab, a different lab and took them to the vet. And so I get to the vet and, you know, of course I have to go to the emergency room because it's after hours. I tell them what happened and they're like, well, do you have another dog? I'm like, that dog didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, in, hindsight, in hindsight, I was like, why would I think that? But I just knew my shepherd would not have touched any of the pills. Yeah. And so, of course, the vet was like, you need to go get your other dog. And I was like, just determined that my. I will, but like, if you're going to. I'm like, that dog didn't do anything. Believe me, it's this one. And turns out it that dog had to stay overnight. My my lab had to stay overnight because there was iron in the pill so that they'd be prepared to do all this crazy stuff and apparently nothing happened like all night they just played with him and <laughs> had him out i was yeah. like great well that was a nice several hundred dollar vet bill yeah. so he could socialize with you guys all night yeah. <laughs> but it just it was just so funny to me because it didn't even dawn on me to bring my other dog i was just like oh no this is the bad one <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> take him in That's so funny. <laughs> how about you susan well, for me, it is an eating story too. And um, I'll tell you, I grew up with um, learning how to make egg noodles and we would have egg noodles with turkey. Um, and so for Thanksgiving and Christmas, and so you roll out the dough and you let it dry. And I covered it with a tea towel, put it on the counter. And oh. I don't even remember where I left, came back and we had three dogs at home that got into it, got oh, it off the counter. And the problem was we have hardwood floors. So this is like paste now <laughs> all over my hardwood floor. And of course it's a holiday and you know, <laughs> you don't really have time, but then you're sitting on the hardwood floors with wet and knife scraping all this up. Now <laughs> that happened probably eight years ago. And what's funny is this past Thanksgiving, um, we, we go out now, but afterwards I, I need to have this comfort food of egg noodles. So <laughs> I had Bill get me a five pound sack of flour that I left on the counter when we went out for our Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> I come home, my 12 year old Archie <laughs> golden mix, got the bag of flour off the counter, busted it on my runners and licked mm -hmm. again. I have hardwood. So the day after Thanksgiving, I get home from Thanksgiving. I look at it, I see it, and I'm like, "I'll deal with this tomorrow. We're going to bed." And I, <laughs> and I was like, "I can't believe you didn't get pictures of that." Like, I wanted Aww. to see pictures with flour all over his face. Oh my god! And the dog's just like, "Hi." Yeah, and yeah. he had that little beard under, you know, where the flour and it's yeah. kind of like they're moist, and so yeah, so yeah, fool me twice. Oh, I didn't think a twelve-year-old, and I, it. it what I loved about it was there's still spunk in that. That's <laughs> right. Dog. Exactly. He's 12, but he's okay. that's great. Don't underestimate me, mom. I'm still always hungry. He's and like, that's on you, it. mom. <laughs> exactly. exactly. It was on me. Our lab ate a probably almost hundred dollar 
uh, beef tenderloin that was for Christmas dinner. Cut into four steaks. Oh my god! No, no, no. That we had that was a oh, whole. Oh, that was a different. Oh, it was the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, that's we came nice. home from. That's right. Church and she was, you know, like our favorite dog all time. Like yes. Yellow lab Tessa. Pyrenees mix, mm -hmm. and she was just oh. like, hi. Something bad might have happened. <laughs> our dog ate a. Uh, we had gone to Alaska and gone salmon fishing in Sitka, Alaska, and we brought back, you know. Smoked several salmon. pounds of like really nice freshly oh, caught gosh. salmon and my husband was fixing it one day and he literally was in the kitchen he turned his back for a second and my dog was like Ooh, an entire <laughs> fillet like down his mouth bye like, bye. just like that we huh? were like oh my god <laughs> gotta go back to Alaska it's funny now isn't it <laughs> it is funny now it was not funny at the time my husband right was, right we oh, know you guys right gotta now. go so we won't we don't want to uh, keep you any longer but thank you so thanks much for yeah, having us on time. it was yeah. fun so much fun. You guys are just, I could sit and talk to you guys all day. This was awesome. Exactly. Yeah. We're happy to come back anytime. Oh, okay. thank you. Well, we will definitely we'll take you up on that. And, uh, uh, we'll, we'll see you next time. If you guys are listening or watching and you want to get a hold of the dog gurus, uh, you can go to the dog and find out all of that. If you're on Facebook, definitely check them out. Cause those Facebook lives are weekly and they are free to watch. So, yes. uh, thank you both for your time and we will see you soon. All right. Thank thanks. You again. Bye. Bye you guys.